Hello, I'm Carol Gravel, and I am a graduate student in Mount St. Vincent University's Organizational Theory and Public Relations Leadership class. If you're a public relations professional looking to climb the corporate ladder, my presentation will give you some valuable insights into how to navigate corporate culture and get you there. Today's presentation will examine the relationship between gender values and corporate culture. Using a symbolic lens, I will demonstrate how corporate culture is created and how male and female gender values can help and hinder men and women from advancing their careers. I will conclude with thoughts on why future study of corporate culture is important from a public relations leadership perspective. And just to define my terms, leadership is not based on ability or style here for this presentation. Rather, for the purposes of this presentation, leadership is defined as being how others make sense of whether an individual is a leader, no matter where he or she sits in the organization. So let's get started. For those of you who are familiar with fundamental communication models, I want to take you to Allaire and Fursarotu's 1984 typology based on the concepts of culture. There are two perspectives under culture and multiple schools of thought within these. For the purposes of this presentation and out of respect for time, I am going to focus on the symbolic school of thought within the ideational perspective. The symbolic school of thought championed by Clifford Gertz is based on culture being an ordered system of shared symbols and meanings that help to shape an individual's behavior. Gertz argued man is an animal suspended in webs of significance he himself has spun. It means that culture does not exist in one's head like a set of laws. Rather, the webs of significance that Gertz describes are the ways in which we communicate with each other through shared symbols and meanings. Most of the time we communicate this way because of the learned patterns we are used to and we don't even think about it. It creates a sort of blindness. So for Gertz, he was not so interested in studying the symbols themselves, but more so with looking at symbols to find out what they revealed about society. These days, corporate culture is not about working in a mechanized factory so much as it being about working in an organization that has a social side to it. Gareth Morgan in 2006 takes symbolic theory a step further and applies it to how social reality is created in organizations. He argued that organizational culture is about shared values, shared beliefs, shared meaning, shared understanding, and shared sense-making to create our own constructions of reality. Further, he believed that our constructions of reality can influence the rules and codes of behavior we deem appropriate to use in different situations. Morgan's argument provides a good basis for how corporate culture is created, though it opens the door to another question. Given more than 70% of public relations practitioners in the United States are female, can men and women be perceived differently in organizations because of their gender values when it comes to promotion time? Do these values have an impact on corporate culture? To understand gender values and their impact on corporate culture, we need to review the two theoretical perspectives used to explain gender and leadership research, and they are structuralism and socialization. According to Marshall in 1984, women and men may be valued differentially in terms of both formal authority by virtue of their post and position and informal authority from their status and standing in the organization. From a structuralism perspective, Carly and Eagley, in 1999, advanced that gendered stereotypical roles impact the behavior of women and men, subordinates' reactions to these behaviors, and the possibility of women exerting influence. They claim this is often because women and men are constrained by expected gendered roles. 
When Aldori in 2004 wrote about socialization, they emphasized that gender socialization impacts leadership because of gendered stereotypical traits and behaviors. Portello and Long, in 1994, described values specific to men as being independent, goal-oriented, objective, assertive, competitive, and logical. Values attributed to women included emotionality, nurturance, and sensitivity to others. It should be quite obvious to the listener that these are two very distinct portrayals. Men are seen to be tougher and not as expressive, and women are seen to be softer and more emotional. It's critical for listeners to understand that these traits, as stereotypical as they might sound, actually do impact how different organizations see individuals as leaders. Just as men and women attempt to define the different traits of masculine and feminine leadership styles, so too do organizations to create their own cultures. Aldorian Tooth conducted research to examine the leadership styles that are perceived as effective and appropriate for public relations and how leadership perceptions are different by gender. Their findings indicate a strong preference for transformational leadership styles. Transformational leadership is marked by qualities surrounding charisma, emphasis on collective identity, self-assertion, and vision, according to McWhiney in 1997. This is compared to transactional leadership or authoritative leadership in which there is a right position and all others are excluded. According to Aldori and Tooth, the focus group participants describe public relations as a job in a constantly changing, turbulent environment, helping to explain their desire for transformational attributes in public relations leadership. Overall, focus group participants perceived women as making better leaderships in public relations due to the socialized traits they have acquired, which is empathy and collaborative efforts, which in turn create a transformational leadership style. Given the large number of females in the public relations field, the findings are not surprising. The research by Aldori and Toth supports their position. Gender socialization impacts leadership in public relations because of gendered stereotypical traits. The research highlights our consistent theme that organizational culture is created through shared values, shared beliefs, shared meaning, shared understanding, and shared sense-making of a particular group who can construct a specific reality. In this case, the audience identifies with a woman who is part of their corporate culture. Let us turn to our final study, which is deliberately focused on structuralism, in which men and women are compared by their formal authority, that is the position they occupy in their organizations, to examine the symbolic relationship with gender values. Sally Hegelson in 1990 used a 1968 study written by management scientist Henry Mintzberg to compare how men and women work differently. Mintzberg had set out to answer the question, what do male managers do? As part of his study, Mintzberg followed five successful male executives throughout their workdays and recorded minute by minute details of their activities in a diary. Overall, Mintzberg wrote that the male executives he studied felt pressured by unscheduled and conflicting demands, had a persistent sense of their own importance, took an instrumental view of others, and defined their own personal strategies in terms of winning, achieving a goal, or reaching an objective. Hegelson used Mintzberg's text to provide herself with a method to compare the four women she spoke to. Specifically, she used his method to describe how women managed companies, defined women's impact in the com contemporary workplace, and by extension, on corporate culture within the organizations in which they worked. Helgeson spoke to two entrepreneurs who started their own organizations and two executives who worked at established corporations. Patterns of similarity that Hegelson found included caring, being involved, helping others, being responsible, 
The most predominant of these was an emphasis on keeping relationships in the organization in good repair, a concern that was reflected in the words the women used. Hegelson's structuralist perspective does not demonstrate how gender values hinder male and female upward mobility, i.e. women not being able to exert influence, as Carly and Eagley in 1999 had argued it did. Rather, it tells us that if we want to get ahead on the corporate ladder, that each organization is different in terms of how they define leadership and that effective leaders should be able to change their style of leadership to fit their environment. Hegelson's work does reiterate, however, the common themes that are presented by Eldori and Toth. Men are perceived by others as being transactional leaders and women are perceived as being transformational leaders. In conclusion, this presentation has examined the relationship between gender values and corporate culture. Using Gertz's symbolic lens, we have also demonstrated how corporate culture can be created, whether it be through structuralism or socialization. We've learned about gender values and how they impact organizations in positive and negative ways. And lastly, we've learned from examples that if we want to get ahead on the corporate ladder, that each organization is different in terms of how they define leadership. Effective leaders can change their style of le leadership to fit their environment. And lastly, that being a part of corporate culture is key to a successful career. Given how important corporate culture is to organizations in being able to sustain themselves, there is a heightened need for public relations professionals to learn more about corporate culture, how it's created, sustained, and how it can be connected to productivity benefits for organizations. That concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed my discussion about my research on the relationship between gender values and corporate culture. I look forward to your questions about it and thank you for your attention.